Imagine a heat wave and you might picture something like this, but extreme heat is a silent killer and heating our planet is adding fuel to the fire. Now for the first time, researchers have worked out just how many more lives a recent heat wave claimed due to climate change. So how much more deadly are these disasters due to burning fossil fuels? And how can protecting people from the heat also protect so much more? I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. Today I'm teaming up with an old friend of mine, Freddie Otto. Freddie is a professor of climate science at Imperial College London. She leads the World Weather Attribution Initiative. Which is a group of scientists aiming to answer the question, what the role of climate change in individual weather events is. Now, like I say, Freddie is an old friend of mine. We were in the same group when I was doing my PhD. And so I'm not exactly objective, but her work is groundbreaking. She has effectively founded the research field that links particular extreme weather disasters to burning fossil fuels. If you've seen headlines like these, then you've seen her work. Today with Freddie, I want to talk about one of the most direct ways climate change affects us, extreme heat. And when I say it affects us, I mean it. You, me, Freddy. In fact, two weeks ago, there was a heat wave across Europe. We were trying desperately to find ways to cool our office. It is one of these buildings that if you are even slightly vulnerable, actually can become quite dangerous in a heat wave. The heat wave saw parts of Europe shut down. Outdoor work banned at times in Italy. Parents told to keep their children home in Paris. This was while temperature records were smashed in Spain and Portugal and fires raged in Turkey. Now, you might say, we always had heat waves even before climate change. And for sure we did. But the point is that climate change is making them worse. Just like, to quote climate scientist David Ho, Twitter has always had a troll problem, but Elon Musk has made it worse. Now, Freddie and collaborators have previously shown the role climate change has played in particular extreme weather events. But for heat waves, that's almost become pointless. Every heat wave that is happening now is hotter than it would have been without climate change. We all feel a bit like a broken record in saying that and also we see that around us not much is happening so cities across Europe are not prepared for these heat waves. But what do we actually need to prepare for? Is extreme heat really so bad? Well, Yes. The reality is heat waves can be extremely dangerous. If you don't take proper precautions, your body can actually overheat. Your heart can't work properly anymore. Your lungs can't work properly anymore. And if you're then not cooled down quickly, that can lead to death. That's right. Extreme heat can be deadly especially when the air is still and humid, since then it's harder to keep cool by sweating. But how is climate change changing that picture? Freddie and collaborators have previously shown that climate change has made European heat waves two to four degrees hotter. That might not sound like all that much, but when we're talking about extra heat on top of extreme temperatures, that can make a massive difference. And that's what Freddie and her collaborators set out to show for this European heat wave. This study saw climate scientists team up with epidemiologists to work out just how deadly this heat was and how much more deadly it was due to climate change. Because our attention spans quickly move on after these extreme events, the team worked tirelessly to analyze the data and publish their results as quickly as possible. It basically means you stop everything else you're working on and just focus on this for a week. This was a first of its kind study, looking at a recent extreme heat disaster and asking how humans burning fossil fuels is changing the number of people dying. And they've done this with tried and tested and peer reviewed techniques. So all the methods were out there before but what we have done this time is to put them all together and to do that quickly. So what did they actually find? Two thirds of the death would not have occurred if it wasn't for climate change. Two thirds were caused by climate change. 
Let's take a moment to really think about what that means. If humans hadn't heated the planet, around 800 people would have died in this heat. But by heating the planet, we've added extremeness on top of this extreme heat wave. And that brought the deaths up to around 2,300 triple the lives lost. I mean, I knew that heat waves were deadly, but to actually see that in a number of dead people and that it's really two thirds, I was not expecting the numbers to be so high. Yeah, me neither. Learning just how many lives are lost and how many of these are due to climate change, it hits pretty hard. Heat waves are dangerous. Do not take them lightly. And here's the thing. Extreme heat affects all of us, but it doesn't affect all of us equally. It hits the most vulnerable hardest. So about 80% of the people are people over the age of 65. When there's a heat wave, do you worry about the older people you have in your life? Do you reach out to them and, you know, check up on them and things like that? I do. And I think actually doing this study and preparing for it in the last few weeks has really made a difference. I know, for example, my partner who is diabetic, that he really struggles uh, in a heat wave, making sure that he is taking good care of himself and that he does stay cool. Work like this is so important because for the longest time, we've talked about climate change as something far off that will affect someone else sometime in the future. But climate change is taking the lives of people all around us here, now. Freddie ultimately hopes that this work will help shift the needle on public opinion, pushing forward climate policy. And this first of its kind study has indeed got lots of media attention. It really gets to people to see that actually real people are dying. And I mean, we just published the study, so I'm, yeah, I, I don't think we'll see tomorrow that all the laws and the fossil fuel subsidies are reversed. So yeah. This is all pretty bleak. Heat waves are claiming lives, and thanks to burning fossil fuels, Europe just saw a heat wave that claimed three times as many lives as it would have otherwise. This comes as research reveals the longest, deadliest heat waves are accelerating fastest. And another study showed that even in England and Wales, relatively mild climates, extreme heat could claim tens of thousands of lives annually in just a few decades' time. By the way, for loads more on extreme heat, you can become a patron up here and watch my full conversation with Freddy. And you'll be making this channel possible since I don't sell you all rubbish you don't need through product placements or ads. But if that's not for you, doing the whole like, comment and subscribe thing is pretty good too. But hold up, this isn't the end of the story. Yes, heat waves are deadly, but it doesn't have to be this way. In theory, no one has to die in a heat wave because almost all of these deaths are preventable. And the thing is, these deaths aren't just preventable. They're often preventable with pretty easy measures, stuff that we, you and me, can help out with. Like in Europe, lots of us simply don't know how serious extreme heat can be. So especially vulnerable people living alone, for example, make sure that they know that heat is, is dangerous. And with that knowledge, reinforcing that people need to stay hydrated, drinking more than they might think they need to. And of course, getting people, especially vulnerable people, into cooler places is vital. For example, providing cooling centers that people can go to chill out, literally. And there's loads of other stuff we can do too. Lots of these solutions are particularly awesome because they're massive win-wins. Like better insulating our homes can help keep them cool in summer. But of course that also helps keep them warm in winter, avoiding winter deaths and suffering. That lowers energy demands, which saves people money and lowers emissions. That's like a quadruple win. And how we arrange our cities can also have heaps of benefits. If you break them out with lots and lots of trees and parks and green spaces, then also the temperatures in the cities are just not getting as high. Green spaces also absorb greenhouse gases, improve mental health and support vital wildlife, like bee populations. And urban plants can be fantastic at tackling deadly air pollution, which 
actually is especially important during a heat wave as air pollution adds to the risk from the heat, which leads to another change that we can make when extreme heat hits. Don't drive during a heat wave because that means that the air pollution levels are, are lower and, and also lowers the danger for vulnerable people. So yeah, there's loads we can and should be doing to protect the most vulnerable among us from extreme heat and would get loads of other benefits from acting too. But the thing is, we also need to tackle the root problem because as bad as extreme heat is today, it's going to get even more extreme tomorrow. We have at the moment 1.3 degrees of global warming and we already have heat waves that are much worse than they would have been. As long as we keep burning fossil fuels, this will only get worse. Luckily though, the inverse is also true. Once we stop burning fossil fuels, we stop the world heating and stop extreme heat and many other disasters getting worse. And here's why. Okay, until next time, bye. Now that I've closed the door, I'm sure my cat will knock on it in two seconds.